sing first and last verses together this morning. so many that would have 
needs in their life. But Father, specifically, uh, Miss Patricia this morning, who lost her son. And Father, yet this heaven's gain, though, and we know that we'll see him again if we know Christ is our Savior. And I pray that you please continue to give her grace and comfort in that family, Lawrence, during this time. And Father, I pray that you meet with us in a very, very special way this morning. I pray for the touch of God, for the moving of God upon our the song, Father, the preaching of your word. Father, may you be exalted and magnified. That's what we're here for, uh, to worship you and to magnify you and give us a sweet spirit. May the touch of God, please, again, be upon the preaching, teaching of your word. The songs, may we leave here refreshed and revived and strengthened in the faith. Father, and most importantly, if there's someone today that does not know Christ as their personal Savior, may today be the day of salvation for them. We'll thank you for all that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand together all over the building this morning. Everyone standing, and we're going to get our next song this morning. I want you to sing it out from your heart. Let's sing it to the Lord and in the spirit of worship this morning. All right, page 337, trust and obey, first and second verses together today. When we walk with the Lord in the light.
one more time. Raise your hand if you want a young brother Holly this morning. You'd like to be a blessing to our youth pastor and our song leader. Raise your hand. I hope you do. He's tired. We, he just got through moving, getting closer to church. And uh, so they're living in King now. And uh, But anyway, uh, here's how you can help him. You can make his job a little bit easier. You ready? One word. Smile. Smile. All right, here we go. You're working. You're doing Most of you are doing it right now. Let's try that during the song. All right? Here we go. All right? It's sunny. You know what? Can I say this really quickly? We'll get right back to this song. You say, Pastor, what is there to smile about? This world is in a mess. Coronavirus, rioting, looting. You know, Pastor, what is there to smile about? Can I say this? Can I just say one word, one name? Jesus. Yes. It's worth smiling about. I know Him as my Savior. He's given me grace. He's given me joy. I don't know what's all going out in the world. I'm, 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 I'm just thankful what's in my heart. Amen? And I can rejoice in that. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord. Amen. We don't have to rejoice in circumstances or situations of our lives or the world, but we can rejoice in the Lord, and I'm thankful for that. Let's sing it all out to the, uh, one more time this morning, and I want you to try smiling as you sing it this time, all right? All right, verse number three, one more time in the right sunlight. Every safely and so bear with us again hopefully in july we'll have everything all of our kids ministries up and running safely uh in a, in a good manner to do that but hopefully about three or four weeks all right and then evening service tonight don't miss tonight uh, i have a message this morning that god gave me of course and um and uh and, and i hope it'll be a blessing to you but tonight i really want you to be here tonight the lord's really laid upon my heart another message that i really believe will be a help to you tonight 
And so don't miss tonight, 6.30. Let's get an early fellowship with God's people. And we don't have to shake hands and hugs, but you can't smile and wave. Amen? And you can't talk to each other, okay? And so uh, let's, let's, I, I love that sweet spirit of fellowship. And it's here. And let's remember to keep a distancing, uh, but also uh, but to, uh, to fellowship with God's people. So let's get here early. And, uh, and uh, I'm, 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 uh, Sunday nights, I love Sunday nights. And I'm, I'm, we're, I've talked to Steve Joyce about this yesterday. I'm, I'm wanting to get a food truck in here on Sunday night. You say, what in the world? Well, here it is. It's hard. You can't really go. Where do we go on Sunday night? We always go to where? Dario. That's a kid. All right, we always go to Dario on Sunday night after church. But, you know, you can't do that in the drive through I thought about, well, we can have temple tailgating out in the... Uh, in the parking lot nearby and so forth, but that's not going to work because everybody's going to go through the drive through So anyway, we thought, let's get the food to come here. We're driving 10, 15 minutes to go to the food. Let's have the food to come here. And so maybe that's in the works. We'll let you know about that maybe sometime in July on a Sunday night after the service. But tonight, don't miss tonight. Again, a special message uh, that I believe will be a tremendous blessing and a help to you. Uh, so please don't miss that tonight. All right? And then... I love offering for Ms. Donna Manuel. Uh, she's out of work right now. We want to help her. And she's drawing a little bit, but not near as much as she would normally get, of course. Uh, broken hip, she's going to be out of work for a good while. And so please uh, so give liberally. I know you will. Uh, if you want to give this morning to that, you can. Uh, just mark it in the envelope. The top of the envelopes are also in the vestibule on the table there. And mark it for Donna Manuel. Okay, if you think that you give this morning, we'll go to Tyler offering unless it's marked. And uh, tonight, if they go to Miss Donna, unless it's marked for Tyler and offering, missions, building fund, youth, etc. Okay? And then our Wednesday evening service, 7 o'clock, youth. Uh, meeting as well. Everything taking place Wednesday night. We had a great service here Wednesday night. Great crowd. Great spirit. I loved it. Uh, keep that in mind if you will. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock in here. Everything is in here for time being. Then also this Saturday is the wedding shower for Caleb and Jordan. Caleb, where is Jordan? Have you guys? Is it? Is it Melvin? She's in the, I know I'm giving him a hard time in front of everybody. Jordan's in, in the nursery. And so uh, please remember to pray for Caleb and Jordan. And uh, that they will continue to have a great marriage. And, and then the wedding show for them will be over in the Genesis building from 2 to 4 uh, this coming Saturday, June 20th, the day before Father's Day. I appreciate Ms. Scarlett Bennett heading that up for us. So keep that in mind, if you will, please. And then this Saturday also is our outdoor youth activity, 5 o'clock. And I know Brother Holly's excited about doing this outdoor youth activity, Nerf. Sounds like something I want to get in on, brother. And I think I, I think I might can swing that. Uh, so next Sunday, Father's Day, we have a gift. We have a lot of gifts for you, Dad. It's just kind of worked out like that. And uh, I want to tell you what it is, so you'll come. But I believe you'll come anyway. All right, but uh, you'll enjoy the gift. And then we get, we got uh, something you can use, and then we've got something that you can really use. All right. And so we got two things for you. And uh, just, we, I know we only got one thing for the moms, for Mother's Day, but it just kind of worked out like this, guys, and uh, for us. So uh, we're excited about that next Sunday. Then our anniversary Sunday, June 28th, uh, Brother Alan Barker, Dr. Alan Barker, uh, whom I worked on staff with for a couple years, my wife and I, we worked under their ministries, and we learned a lot uh, there with Richard Barker. And uh, I don't know what he's going to say, but he gets here next Sunday, June 28th. But he will bring a message that will stir your heart. I promise you that. And, uh, and Miss Jan will hopefully, we'll try to get her to sing on that Sunday night. She's got a tremendous voice. God really has used them in evangelism for the last little while of their lives. And so you continue to pray for them. Then we're going to have dinner on the grounds. Raise your hand if you're missing those drive-through lunches that we had back in our drive-in. Man, I miss those. And uh, we're not done yet with Steve and Laura. They're going to... Do our meal for us on that day, and uh, that's two weeks from now, isn't it? Two or three. And so, uh, what we'll do with that is we'll we'll exit. We won't, you know. Normally, we would have like a big potluck, all you can eat type thing, but we can't do that because of our guidelines right now. But what we'll do is we'll out, go outside here and under the shelter, just like our drive-ins. We'll pick up a individual container, and it'll be something. Great, and it'll be like a, a meal. 
and uh, so forth. And what we're going to do, we're going to go out here in this big yard behind this on our property here, and we're going to put out our lawn chairs. You can put up a tent if you want to. And, uh, and we're going to just have dinner on the grounds, literally. And you're going to enjoy that. We'll be spaced out tremendously. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. All right, so keep all that in mind. Uh, Sunday morning on that day, you might want to go ahead and take out your stuff, stake your ground, and uh, go ahead and get, get your plates out there. And, uh, but anyway, but uh, I'm looking forward to that special, special day, anniversary Sunday. Then I'll have more announcements tonight uh, about uh, some other things coming up. And uh, that we're going to be doing in July. We got a lot of things coming up: uh, Young Adult Fellowship Cookout, Minsky Shoot, a lot of things that I'll make mention of tonight that we don't have time for this morning. So keep all those things in mind. A lot of those things are in your bulletin. So keep all those things, brother. Do we have one more song? Come on up here. Let's all stand together. Everyone smiling. Everyone singing and standing. Here we go. This is one of my favorite courses in the hymn book, Learning to Lead. We're going to sing it through just a couple times. Think about the words as we sing together this morning. Learning.
that say amen. amen. What a blessing. I enjoyed that very much. I have to get them to sing more consistently. We'll get Matt to sing with them. I think you need to, brother. Is there, is there one song that you sing with them? Negative. Not negative. <laughs> no. First Peter chapter number three in your Bibles this morning. And uh, I enjoyed that. God has been so good to us and then blessing us. Same time they joined Travis and Ashley joined their family uh, just two or three weeks ago. And uh, you know our prayer, and I've heard folks tell me this was pressed or my prayer was during this pandemic that that our church would not be hurt, but that our church would grow uh, spiritually, uh, financially, and numerically during this time. And we've seen that, and uh, all three of those. And I thank God for His blessings upon our church. And, uh, and I appreciate you because you've been faithful in every bit of this. We have folks listening on their phones. They don't have the internet in their home. They can't watch. But they're listening this morning via their phone. And that is such a blessing to me. The folks are watching that don't feel safe yet about coming back. We're about 70% of our church family being back. Uh, last Sunday morning, this, this is about the same, maybe a little bit more this morning than last week. And, uh, and I am so encouraged by our church family. You've continued to pray. You're continuing to do your devotions. And, and I just love you. I appreciate you very much. And I thank you for your commitment to the Lord during this time. And, uh, and also to, to the church. And to the local New Testament Bible, Bible church. Tonight, or this morning, I want you to look at this in verse number 8. 1 Peter chapter number 3. 1 Peter chapter number 3. And verse number 8 and I want to ask you a question. And this is a, in, a, in the idea of a, of a question. Uh, we're going to be talking about what is your answer. And the theme is hope, as we have it up here. But I want to talk to you about what is your answer. Uh, and you'll see what we mean in just a minute. Let's begin reading in verse number 8 of 1 Peter chapter number 3. The Bible says, Finally, be ye of all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love is brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are thereto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. In verse number 10, the Bible says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that seek no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good, let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? But, and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Many people today have God in their heads, but not in their hearts. Amen. And that's where he needs to be. That's where God desires to be, is in our hearts, uh, to be positioned there first in our hearts. And be ready, here's the idea that we're going to be revisiting this morning, be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Father, we love you. I ask this morning, once again, that you would help me for the next few minutes to, to be a blessing to your people. And I ask that you would speak to me and speak through me, use me to be a blessing. And most importantly, to honor you and help me to say everything I should, nothing I shouldn't. God, my tongue, lips, heart, and mind. And we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Peter, of course, is writing here this letter under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and speaking to Christians concerning their conduct uh, in the Christian life. And he also speaks to them concerning the persecution that uh, they're, they're enduring a little bit. And when we get to verse number 15, he tells them and tells us today to be ready to give an answer for the hope that is within us. And when I read that, when I read that earlier, and the Lord spoke to my heart about it to bring to you this morning, uh, I'm reminded that as a Christian, I have hope. Amen. I have hope. Yeah. I, you know, I don't...
sit around and, 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 and I say this to God be the glory. I don't sit around and bite my nails. I personally think that's a little bit unhygienic. Is that the right word maybe to say? And uh, I, I, I see my kids every once in a while doing that. I say, don't do that, you know. And, uh, and uh, uh, but anyway, I don't sit around and bite my nails, so to speak. I'm not criticizing you if you bite your nails. You do whatever you want. Your house, your nails. You do whatever you want. <laughs> Uh, but I, I, I don't sit around. You don't understand what I'm saying. I don't sit around and threat by God's grace because God has given me a purpose of life. He has given me something inside of me as a believer. Now, if you're not a believer, you will not understand the, the full uh, text here. Because Peter is writing to you and I as believers, those who put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He's saying to them, look, we have a hope and it's in us. It's not around us. It's not above us. Our hope is inside of us. And God teaches here that people should sense that hope inside of us. And when we are asked to give an answer concerning the hope, in other words... Why are you not around biting your fingernails? In other words, uh, your co-workers will look at you and say, why are you not stressed about the pandemic? Or why are you? And I understand that there's a difference in being stressed about it and, and having fear and being careful. There's a big difference there. Uh, but uh, uh, people are saying, uh, people may perhaps say at your workplace or whatever, your family, your friends or neighbors or whatever, why are you not stressed to the max about the rioting and, and today in America and what's going on? And there is wonderful opportunity that God has given you to say, because I have something inside of me that's called hope. And I have things that, although the world may be falling apart around me, I have a firm foundation. Amen. It's called hope, and the hope is not on my finances. It's not in the stock market. If your hope is in the stock market, I encourage you to find another place. Amen. Because you will not have hope. You will be like a termite in a yo-yo. Can I use that illustration there? You will be nuts. Uh, uh, my hope is not in this uh, position of leadership or this or this or this. My hope, you see, as a believer, is in Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this question. Do you have hope? I want you to inventory your heart this morning. Do you have hope? Yeah, Pastor, I hope that this happens. Yeah, Pastor, I sure do hope that right. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about in the midst of the circumstances that are going on in our country and around your neighborhood. I'm talking saying, do you have hope? And let me say this, or let me ask you this. Can others see hope in you. Because see, the idea is not to spread hate in this world. The idea is to spread what? Love and hope and peace. And so where are people going to find that? They're going to find it in God, aren't they? Is that God is not walking around in the world right now. God chooses to dwell within us, and we as his disciples are walking around in the world showing God through our lives. And so somebody needs to see hope somewhere. And it's in God through you and I as believers, as his children. And let me ask you a question. If, someone, if, if, if you do have hope and someone were to see that you were different, that you were responding differently, that you had some hope, that you had some peace about you, would you be able to explain it to them? Because that's where change really happens is when you are able to explain what has happened in your life. I want you to notice three things, and I'm done this morning, about hope. Number one, God gives a hope that dwells within us. Look back in verse number 15. And if you're in the habit of uh, uh, underscoring your Bible or highlighting your Bible, I'd encourage you to uh, highlight these words. The Bible says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you to do The reason, notice this, of the, here it is, underscore it, hope that is in you. Hope, again, does not dwell above us or below us or amongst us. It dwells within inside of you and I as a born-again believer. You see, this morning I have hope inside of me uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ, of my Savior. The Bible teaches us that, I, I love this verse in, in John chapter number 20, verse number 31. You need not turn there. But the Bible teaches us in the Gospel of John uh, 20, verse 31. But these are written, the miracles that Jesus did. The, 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 the healing of the, the leper, the one who had disease. 
the, the healing of the blind man, the raising of the dead, all these miracles were written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. You see, when I trusted Christ as my personal Savior, I now have hope inside of me uh, as, my, as Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. I have someone, the Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit of God uh, dwells inside of us, and I have someone inside of me. We can say the Holy Spirit dwells inside, God dwells inside, Jesus dwells inside, whatever you want, because God the Father, God the Spirit, God the Father are all three one, aren't they? We believe in the Trinity. Uh, we can't explain that, but we believe it by faith, because God has asked us to not understand it, but believe it. And as a believer, I have hope inside of concerning my Savior. I have a Savior who is real. I do not bow down. I do not have hope in my heart of a wooden statue, nor a treasure buried somewhere. But I have, uh, my hope is in a person, the person Jesus Christ, who was real, who lived the life. It is documented. It is history, friend. Why not believe that he did those things when it is documented, uh, not only in the Word of God, but in the history books, that there was a man who lived named Jesus. And why can we not believe it by faith that he did those things for you and I to prove that he was indeed the Son of God? We have someone that is real. We have someone that is caring. We have someone that is near. You see, as a believer, I have hope inside of me in Jesus Christ. As a believer, I have hope inside concerning salvation. A salvation that was given by God. I love Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8. The Bible says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. For by grace are ye saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. A believer, if you're saved this morning, you have a hope inside if you'll recognize it. And that hope is in your salvation. The fact that you do not have to die and, etern and spend eternity in hell, but that you can have eternal life in heaven. Because of salvation, not that you, uh, not that you constructed, not that you made up, not that you did yourself, but that God gave you. And I'm so thankful that we do not have to earn our salvation. We cannot work for our salvation. It is something that God has given us through His Son Jesus Christ. All I have to do is accept it by faith and believe that Jesus was buried, that He died, He was buried, He rose again, and accept Him as my personal Savior. And that gives me hope, you see, not only in the person of Jesus Christ, my Savior, but hope in the salvation that I have that was given to me. And friend, if it's given to me, uh, why would you think that God would take that away from Amen. you? Some people believe that you can lose your salvation. Well, friend, salvation is promised by God. I'm reminded of 1 5, John 5, 13. These things are written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. You believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. And I'm thankful that God has given me a hope of salvation. A salvation that God has given me. And he's promised me eternity in heaven, you see. I have hope not only in the Savior, Jesus Christ. I have hope in salvation. But I have hope in Scripture. This Bible that I trust you have. I hope that you have a copy. If you don't, we'll get you one. But I love the Word of God because not only do I find my hope in Jesus, I find my hope in salvation that He's given, but I find hope in the Scriptures, the Word of God. The Bible says in Psalms 119, verse 114, Thou art my hiding place. You say, Pastor, what are we going to do? Find, during this time of America, find you a hiding place. Yeah. And go get by yourself somewhere and talk to God. Yeah. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. We have, I, I have hope in the Bible's inspiration. Can I say that? I'm reminded of 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. You know what the word inspiration means? It means God breathed. You say, well, Pastor Peter wrote this, didn't he? That we're reading this morning? Yes, but God told him what to write, you see. Kind of like an essay back in school. And you were with your girlfriend, maybe. And you had an essay. It was due tomorrow. It's 1130. You're writing the essay. Don't tell me you didn't do it every once in a while. Your friend, your girlfriend, don't matter who your mom, your dad, wherever. And you had an essay. And it's whatever. 
uh, link the blog, you know, 10 pages, whatever, and you've got to do this essay, it's turning tomorrow, and you say, oh my goodness, please help me, I don't know what to write, and they say, it's your own fault, you should have done this three weeks ago when you knew about it, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and you say, well, I'm sorry, please help me with this, please help me know what to write, you cheated, and oh my goodness, you got in trouble for it, but anyway, the illustration is this, uh, the person what to write down, I don't know if this is a good illustration or not, but we have kids in here now. But if I were to, if my wife were to tell me uh, to, to say this, uh, Josh, write down this, dear, uh, you know, Matt, I don't know why I'm using Matt so much this morning, dear Matt, dear Grady, dear Ida, whatever, and she would tell me what to write, I would write it down as she would tell me. Those are not necessarily my words, I'm just being the instrument that is being used or the tool that's being used. My wife is the one who the words are coming from. And that's why we call this the Word of God, because the Bible says it is, was inspired by God. And by the way, when I think about that, if I give it any thought, I can understand that that's true. When prophecy comes true, something that was prophesied 700 years to take place happens, such as the virgin birth of Christ. That helps me understand that inspiration, God breathed, God telling someone to write is true. And I have hope in the inspiration of the Word of God. That this is not just another book from the library. This is not just another book, friend. But I have hope when I read it in the morning that I'm reading the very Word of God. That, by the way, can I say on the, I'll say on the grounds of prophecy, we are seeing fulfilled in our eyes today. Look around, apply it to the Word of God. See if you cannot see it. Something tells me that this book is true. Something tells me that this was just more of man's ideas, that it was inspired by God, and I have my hope in that. And I have my hope that it is preserved by God. The Bible says in Psalms 12, 7, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, talking about the, the, the Scriptures. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. God says that His Word will not pass away. It's here to stay. Amen. Amen. So a believer, we have hope that dwells within us. What is that hope that's inside us? Inside of me beats the hope of my Savior. Beats the hope of salvation. Because I've trusted Him as my personal Savior. By the way, if you've never trusted Christ your personal Savior, please, I know we're not really using the altar because of social distancing right now, but can I encourage you to talk to someone after the service about getting saved? You don't want to miss out... If I was not saved, I would be scared to death right now when I was looking at this world. And I had any common sense about me at all. Some of you are thinking right now, Pastor, sometimes I wonder about that common sense part. And, uh, but a believer has hope in Scripture, and a believer has hope inside concerning the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe with all my heart, Jesus is getting ready to come. You say, Pastor, we've said that a long time. And we may say it for another 50 years. And that's fine. But I just want to encourage you with this. If they said to the Christians 2,000 years ago, be ready, how much more should we be ready for? Amen. Be ready. The Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery in 1 Corinthians 15, 51. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In the moment of the twinkling of an eye, the last trumpet, the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised in corruptible, and we shall be changed. Jesus Christ, there is such a thing as the rapture. It's not mentioned. That word is not mentioned in Scripture. The concept is, it's a snatching way. It's God coming back in the clouds and calling us up. And then, you see, God, we're saved of the wrath from the wrath of God. Okay? God is a God of love. The Bible also tells us that we, we, we skip over because we don't want to hear it. But it's the truth. God is God of love, but God is also God of wrath. And God is it, it, going to judge sin because he's holy and perfect. He has to judge sin. Amen. And so the, at, at some point, this world, God is going to say, enough is enough. I'm going to judge the world. Well, if you're saved by grace, you're going to be saved from the wrath to come. That's, that scripture, there's no, there's no contending with that, friend. That scripture, it's solid as a rock. The wrath is going to come. The judgment of God is going to come. Read the book of Revelation. It's going to set up. Things are going to continue to uh, unwind until there's an antichrist, a leader. But, friend, before all of that happens and the judgments of God, the seven years of tribulation, all before Jesus Christ comes back in power and glory and sets up his kingdom, the leader of your kingdom. But before the tribulation takes place, if you're saved by grace, you're, you're, we're getting out of here. 
It's called the rapture. It's a very biblical, uh, it's, it's very it's so biblical uh, that we're going to get out of here. And I believe with all my heart this morning, I've got some hope in the coming of Jesus Christ. And I'm looking forward to that. So God gives us a hope. The next two will not be long at all. God gives us a hope that dwells within us. But secondly, God gives us a hope that drives us. God gives us a hope inside that dwells within us. Of Jesus, my Savior, and salvation that he's given me. And then also of the scriptures that I have to cope with my heart on a daily basis. When everything is else upside down. And the soon coming of Jesus Christ. But get this again. God gives us a hope that drives me. The Bible says Peter is writing here. And he's trying to help these Christians in their conduct and to continue. Look, there's a reason that we started in verse number 18. You say, Pastor, or verse number 8. Rather, we didn't even get to 18, did we? Verse number 8. There's a reason that we started reading there. And I want you to look back with me and skim over verse number 8. Because Paul said, Peter says the reason we have a hope that's within us and the hope, stay with me, we're going somewhere with this. The hope that is within me, it drives me, it challenges me to do something for the Lord. And notice this, I'm to live for the Lord in these actions of my life. In verse number 8 we find that we are to be of one mind. See, I would, if I didn't have hope in Scripture, if I didn't have hope in Jesus, if I didn't have hope in, in Jesus coming back perhaps today and, and taking me to heaven, if I didn't have hope in this, this would not drive me to do these things. But because I have hope in Jesus and I believe that He's coming and I believe that He saved me, I have hope and this, this, this drives me, that encourages me to live for Him and do something. And you say, well, what does God want me to do? I'm glad you asked. Again, look at verse number 8. To be of one mind. That doesn't mean everybody has to agree on everything. Husbands and wives, 90% of the time, do not agree on everything. And of course, 80% of the statistics are made up on the spot. But uh, the truth of the matter is, most, some of you are getting that tomorrow. Uh, most, listen, very careful. The truth of the matter is, husbands and wives don't agree on everything all the time. Children do not agree on everything all, every, time, every time. You say, Pastor, how is your house? Uh -huh, you know. <laughs> Everybody doesn't agree. You're going to stop there. Everybody doesn't agree all the time. But we are to be in one mind. In other words, we're, work, we're to work together. I can agree to disagree. If I disagree, I can find some agreement in that that we can agree to disagree. I may, I may not care for, uh, you may not care for my pink tie. But I may not care for your blue shirt. But we can agree that we are, we're thankful for air conditioning. Amen? Listen. <laughs> We are looking, so, listen, can I, can I say this in America? We are looking for so many things to disagree on. Why don't we look for something to agree on? Amen. I'm thankful to be a church, part of a church that is, has a sweet spirit of one accord and one mind and one spirit. And I'm grateful for that. Let's continue with that. Be of one mind. This hope dwells me, uh, drives me to be compassionate. Instead of being hard-hearted during today's world, may God help us to be compassionate. Look at the next thing that we find, to love one another. How simple is that? But so many times we fail to do that, to, to show the love of God amongst one another in our communities. And to be pitiful. And notice the next one, to be courteous. And uh, it's common sense things. But as a Christian, as a believer, because of the hope that dwells within us, these things that are drive us to do these things. Not rendering evil for evil. Don't try to keep getting back at somebody for doing you wrong. Let God take care of that. It's doing evil, avoiding evil, and getting the wrong away from your life and seeking peace. All of these things in the verse 8 and 9. And may the Lord help us to allow that hope that dwells within us as a believer to drive us in our conduct and how we conduct ourselves. And may this hope, I want you to look at verse number 14, may this hope that, dry, uh, that dwells within us drive us to continue. Notice in verse number 14, but Peter says this, and if you suffer for righteousness sake, stop there. there the Bible teaches us that if all that live godly shall suffer persecution. It may not be imprisonment. It may not be uh, 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 destroying our, your home. But the truth of the matter is, if you live godly, sooner or later, someone, you're going to get some, some, some negative feedback. Somewhere along the lines, if you stand for anything concerning Christianity, 
somewhere, somehow, and Peter knew that. And Peter was encouraging them that the hope, it's all tied in again to, I believe, the hope that was in them. That it causes me to continue. When I think about the soon coming of Jesus Christ, when I remember what he's done for me in saving me, and all that Jesus went through for my sins, that drives me to keep on going. That drives me to come back on Sunday night. That drives me to come back on Wednesday night. That drives me to tell somebody else about Jesus. That drives me to do these things in the Word of God. The hope that God has given me. It don't just dwell in me. It drives me. And then it is to be thirdly demonstrated through us. And I'm done. But I want you to notice this. God gives hope that is to be demonstrated to us. Let's look again one more time at verse 15. We're done. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you the reason of the hope that is in you. The hope that is in you. Can I say this? If you have a hope in the Lord, if you have a genuine hope in the Lord, it will be apparent somehow, some way. If you have a genuine, I'm not talking about, well, pastor, I hope this thing will blow over soon. I'm talking about if your foundation is in Scripture and your hope is in uh, the, your Savior and your salvation, the soon coming of Christ. If your hope is established in these things, friend, then it will be apparent somehow in the way you live your life. We just went over that. It will be apparent as you go to work. It will be apparent that there's something different about old George. Do we have anybody in here named George? I hope not. <laughs> I'm just using that out of the blue. Didn't even write that down. There's something different about George, and there's something different about old Georgiana. Nobody's in here called Georgiana, is there? Okay. There's something different about those people. They're not going nuts right now. When everybody else is pressured to go nuts. They're not going crazy. They're not biting off their toenails, fingernails. What, what's, what's with them? It will be apparent. And if you have hope in the Lord, can I say this? It will be appalled. There's some people that's going to look at you in, this, in disdain and dismay because you've got a hope in the Lord that they may not believe in. And that's, their, and that's fine. That's their right. That's their, we respect people who do not believe in the Lord. But that's not going to keep me, listen, by God's grace, that's not going to keep me from living. Amen. Yeah. But if you have hope in the Lord... To some, it will be appealing. Yeah, that's good. Can I say this? Look at me. Come here for just a second. And I'm getting ready to close. Don't close your Bible. People in this world today, I don't care if it's America, South America, Australia, Asia. I don't care where it's at. Europe. People are looking for hope. And we have it. say, Pastor, I came today looking for hope. Well, I just want to encourage you today that if you're saved, you've already got it. I go back to these questions this morning. Do you have hope? If you don't have hope in knowing that you're going to heaven one day, if you don't have hope through this pandemic and the riots and everything, the craziness of the world, if you don't have hope, you can get it today. He's in Jesus Christ. It is in Jesus Christ. And once you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, friend, you're going to find some hope. You're going to have some peace. You're going to have some consistency in your, in your life that wasn't there. And don't ask me to explain all the details. You can, I can't necessarily explain it. You have to experience that for yourself. Salvation, the reason we call it him a personal Savior is because he is a personal Savior. It is a personal experience. But once you trust Christ your Savior, you're going to find some genuine hope that's dwelling inside. Do you have that hope? And if you don't, I beg of you, don't leave here without talking to me or my wife or a youth pastor, his wife, someone about getting saved. We'll talk to you privately off to the side. I won't embarrass you, but I want to encourage you, from my heart to yours, don't wait too long. Unless, let me ask you this. We're going back to these questions. We ask you today. Do you have hope? First. Secondly, if you do have that hope, does that hope drive you to do something for Jesus? 
Does that hope drive you to live for Jesus? I think so many Christians today are living for themselves. And Jesus is getting ready to come back. And I believe that with all of my being. I'm not here for a show. I'm not here for pay. I'm here to help you with the Word of God because God put it in my heart when I was a 20-year-old boy. People need the Word of God preached. Oh, my goodness. Does that hope drive you to live for the Lord? And is that hope being demonstrated through you? In your home, in your, in your grocery store, in your workplace, in your car, is the hope that you have in the Lord being demonstrated to you? Is it apparent to people that are around you that you have something inside of you? That you have some stable stability in your life through all of this. I'm not being prideful when I say I'm not nervous through all this. It makes me, you know, to any red-blooded American, this, this is aggravating. But can I say this? God has given me something through it. God has given you, if you have hope in God, he's given you something to continue. And that is hope. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Our musicians are coming. And I want to ask you this question, and I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to call your name. I am not going to embarrass you in any way, shape, and form. But I would like to ask you this question. With heads bowed, every eye closed, every head bowed, I'd like to ask you this question this morning. If you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I know for sure, as our musicians begin to play, Pastor, I know for sure, I know I'm saved. Would you slip up your hand right now? Would you be honest with me, Pastor? I know I'm saved. Thank you. You can put your hands down. I wonder this morning if you say, Pastor, I could not raise my hand. Pastor, I could not raise my hand because I'm an honest person, but I don't know I'm saved this morning. Would you lift up your hand? I'm not going to come to you or call your name right now. I'm not going to do anything, but I would like to pray for you in my own private time. Would you raise your hand right now and say, Pastor, would you pray for me that I would get saved, that I would trust Christ, that I would make that decision? Anyone like that this morning? Perhaps you're watching or listening. Today, online, through your phone, why don't you trust Christ as your personal Savior this morning? And then how about this? I'm going to ask you this question. And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Do you have hope? And if you do, wonderful. Is it being demonstrated in your life? Are you taking hold of that? Are you putting that in practical use? Well, the Holly's going to lead us in this song. Let's stand together with heads bowed, eyes and closed. All over the auditorium, we're standing, heads bowed, eyes closed. I want you to listen to the words of this song as he sings. Have I no way? I want you to do business with the Lord right now on your part. Why don't you call him? Call him to him right now in prayer. Say, Lord, help me. Help me to have hope in you. Lord, help that hope to be used for So that hope to be demonstrated through my life. You're not saved. Why don't you call on him right now? Ask him to come in your heart. Save him. Let us know if you do. We'll help you. We have great crowds on Sunday nights and a great spirit as well. And Sunday nights, 
It is a whole different message, whole different songs. I think sometimes people think uh, that our Sunday nights are the same exact as Sunday mornings. They're totally different service, a totally different message. And a lot of times the Sunday night messages are more for practical Christianity to use to apply to your Christian life. And so I want to really encourage you to come tonight, 6.30, and we'll be social distancing in the fellowship building, all right? And I love you. You're glad you came. Did you say amen? amen. Visitors, thank you for coming. Returning visitors, thank you for being back with us. Our church family, thank you for being faithful as always. I love you. God bless you. You are dismissed. Don't forget about your tithe and offering. Okay.